got my cat sitting next to me. It's oh, sick. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, who was it? Anna Newkirk did it with her cat, and it was like um, <laughs> knocking stuff off in the kitchen and stuff, like while she was recording. It was great. Yeah, I'm hoping he just sleeps and doesn't go onto the keyboard. Ah, she yeah. right. I can fix it in post. <laughs> yeah. Easy. You want to jump straight in then and, and get started? I guess so. <laughs> so I don't really know what else to do. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, yeah, well, easy as. Um, Sasha Mills, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. <laughs> That's all right. Um, some people may remember like uh, you were called Sasha Kim at one of the World Cups by Ben Cathro at one stage. Yeah. And then there was Sasha Ernest this year, absolutely ripping. So basically what I've derived is that if someone has a kid, they should call them Sasha so they can be good at, at mountain bikes. There's a few Sashas in the sport. <laughs> <laughs> How was it um, having Ben Cathro mention your name after that in that World Cup race? Kind of unreal because, like, I've always been, you know, watching the pink bike stuff and all that, and then my name's on there and I'm like, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah. yeah, sick. So I guess for those who don't know who I am and, and what do you kind of do? What was that? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, for those who don't know who I am and what, what do you do? Um, well, my name's Sasha Mills. I'm a downhill mountain biker in my second year of under-19s at the moment. Um, and I'm doing World Cups this year, so full season of World Cups. That's basically my main Part in the sport, I guess. <laughs> but, how yeah. how long have you been riding for? I've been riding a bike since I was like five. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> BMX, started with BMX. And then I've kind of always done mountain biking. But then we went, when I was about 11, I kind of switched over. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> was you... What drew you, drew you into bikes? Like, uh, were you racing BMX and stuff? Or? Yeah, so with BMX, I probably raced for about, oh, I don't know how many years it was, but quite a few years. Um, we went world, like world champs in that nearly every year, and I always finaled and stuff. But um, my dad got me and my brother into it because um, he did it when he was a kid. So you kind of just went from there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love how you just randomly just, yeah, I just went to world champs and got into finals. Like, Best result was second, but yeah. <laughs> that's still pretty sick. Like, yeah. What, cool. what age were you starting to go overseas and compete or competing at Worlds? And... I think my first Worlds was when I was like six, seven, around then. Can't yeah. remember. <laughs> it was in New Zealand. The first one was New Zealand. And I got fifth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most but. kids are kind of learning to ride at that stage. <laughs> so to be yeah. Yeah, but, we were kind of straight into it, kind of, because I was pretty good in the country. So I just kept going up levels, I guess. So. Yeah. I think world champs, I went fifth, fourth, third, second, fourth, seventh, and then I stopped. Okay. Never quite got that first day. <sighs> I got really close a few times, but you know, never got it. But. What was yeah. that? What what drew the switch from uh, BMX to mountain bike? Um, well, we always did like you know trips to do to like New Zealand and stuff because we had family there and we ride there and we'd always kind of been on the mountain bikes. We didn't race, and then I just kind of liked it more. And then we did um, a few local rounds downhill, and then I did Cannonball. I think it was 2018 was my first Cannonball, and then I was like, oh, I kind of like this better. So I just started doing that more instead and then just was like I can't do BMX anymore I don't like it as much it's too stressful kind of it's very you have to have a good mental state for BMX I think okay how's it kind of differ um well BMX you have well, seven other riders on the gate with you and you're you're bar to bar kind of oh my dad's gonna... <laughs> bar to bar like with other riders like it's tough and then you in practice you overseas you have like other kids and they'll be like oh she's fastest in her country and they'll like try and target you and practice and stuff and it's just kind of a bit toxic in a way and you have all the parents like 
kids that are like five years old, a lot of the parents can be quite hard on the other kids. Like my parents were pretty good. I'm lucky for that. But some of these like, you know, BMX parents are scary. <laughs> but yeah. No, yeah it's... I've come across a few of those BMX dads. Yeah. And you're just like, this is too intense, man. Start the back. Yeah. You find that mountain biking, you don't have to worry about everyone else. It's all on you. So you just go down the track, put in the best lap you can and let the time take care of itself, basically. So you don't have to worry about getting knocked off by other people and trying to you know, battle for the win. <laughs> Was it kind of less pressure in some ways because it's all down to you as well? Like it's yeah. you versus the track and if something happens, it's on you. So there's kind of, you can Basically. kind of understand that more. Yeah. It's all on you. You don't have to think about anyone else basically. <laughs> Just in your own little world, going down the hill. <laughs> and uh, did all your skills and stuff kind of translate across? Yeah, I think it's definitely made me a better, like, jumper and I'm better at corners and stuff, just all the skills kind of transferring across to, you know, the downhill kind of aspect of everything, I guess. But, mm. yeah, definitely helps with the base skills for everything. It's like, I know how to handle a bike and stuff. Mm -hmm. so. I know a few like my BMX mates, like they went from the little bike to the big bike and it took them a long time to realize how fast they can hit rocks because they were so yeah. used to their little wheels that, yeah, once they got on the big bike with big suspension, they realized you can just plow through stuff. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm also lucky that I also had done mountain biking a lot while mm. I was doing BMX. So I also knew kind of how to control a bigger bike as well and um, did a little bit of motocross when I was a kid, not too much. but Okay. So pretty outdoorsy bike focused family then. Yeah. My dad's bike addict. He likes buying bikes. <laughs> <laughs> did he compete or race at all? Like you, you mentioned he did when he was younger, but was he was he high level or no, not high level for anything, I don't think. I know he he did a few races BMX as a kid, and I think he raced some like um motocross stuff. Uh not really sure what kind he raced, but it was like I think it's like the more going through the bush kind of motocross stuff oh. that he raced. Um, yeah, I know my brother still does a lot of motocrossing now. Okay. I think they only just got back from the motocross shop. <laughs> the car came in before. <laughs> are they? Uh, are you and your brother quite competitive then, like if you're ever on the bike together? Yeah, he's a lot faster than me, obviously, but, you know, I always like to tease him saying that I'm faster than him and stuff. <laughs> <I'm> not. <laughs> Yeah, he's definitely a lot faster. Um, but yeah, it's good having him to train with Max pushes me to try and like you know, try and beat him and chase him. And he's good for like jumps and that because he's basically fearless. He just goes into stuff that I look at and I'm like, okay, and then I'll do it. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty easy to be honest. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's helpful with that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's so sick. Um, have you been competitive like your whole life with him? Like with with every part, yeah, every little thing is a competition with us too. <laughs> <laughs> that obviously helps in a way, right? Yeah, definitely makes me want to do better at things. <laughs> we like if we looked at I looked at roots and rain um, before the episode, and I was like going through your results and stuff, and it seems like you were pretty much at the top for a long time. But for some races, it was quite a, a small field. Was it a bit different? going from like a bigger field of BMX girls and, and women to a small field in mountain biking, I guess. Yeah. If I'm like um, in the SEQ where I am, there's not many girls that race at all. So some races it'd just be me and then some races would be maybe two of us, three of us. But like you find it's really embarrassing going up on the podium by yourself. <laughs> it <laughs> doesn't feel like you've won it. It's just like, mm. so I normally found myself like time trialing myself against like the older girls or the boys, seeing where I'm sitting with that. So, yeah, you just kind of have to rely on the times instead of your own category sometimes because they, they wouldn't let me um, race up in elites in all mm. the races, like in the local rounds. So I just had to you know, <laughs> wing it. <laughs> Yeah, it's one of the most annoying things about the insurance is that you can't race up a level because there's yeah. so many young kids that could and would be very competitive up there. Yeah. Do you remember how your times kind of went compared to the uh, older groups or the, or the male groups? Um, 
with the elite women near me, I was normally beating them. I think there might have been a couple times where someone might have been my time, but most races from when I was like, you know, under 15s all the way to now, I'm beating like the local elite women. But, you know, there's not much I can do about that, I guess. <laughs> was that, um, did that mean you had kind of eyes from outside sponsors and stuff on you fairly early as well? Or, uh, not really, to be honest. I kind of, my first sponsor was. Second year under 17 is when I kind of picked up um, uh, KWT mm -hmm. um, with I had Maxis and Kenny and Fun and all that stuff for like two ish years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they came to me um, at a local race and I'm kind of like, yeah, <laughs> feel pretty good. <laughs> <It's like>, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Easiest to <do> ever, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So they've been pretty good support for the last two years. So it helped me out a bit, especially with tyres. Go through tyres so quickly. <laughs> yeah, and with the cost of them these days. You, oh, yeah. That's like a, a solid chunk of money. What yeah. was it like having a brands like that come up to you and, and ask or take notice in you? Was it a big confidence boost or were you a little bit taken back? Or? Uh, I think it definitely helped my confidence. I was like, oh, I'm actually getting people to notice me. But I've always kind of been a little less confident on that side, but oh, no one notices me back then. I was kind of like, mm. and then when people started to like recognize my name, people started to like know who I am. I was like, whoa, people know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> it's funny because like uh, when I first found out who was, had nothing to do with results because I was shooting Threadbow, I think, and it was Duke Millington. Ellie Smith, and then you came behind him, and I had no idea. And then you just ripped the corner so hard. It was so sick. <laughs> yeah. And had to kind of scout out your race number and find out who you were, but that was, yeah, it's definitely your style that kind of got a few people's ears up for the start for sure. Yeah. I can either be, like, really good on the bike or I can be extremely sketchy on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing. It's good to be able to, like, get loose uh, and ride like that yeah <laughs> had a few tumbles over the last few years just because i'm either riding too fast into a corner or something or just not paying attention <laughs> <laughs> i still remember at eagle as well like you threw the uh the biggest whip on that last hit out of everyone <laughs> yeah have a good just... photo of that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that was yeah it was so good to to kind of watch and see like just your bike handling skills so that yeah. must have come from that BMX. Most likely. Well. Yeah. Um, I guess like uh, you mentioned you've had a few injuries as well. Like last year would have been one of the biggest ones in the worst timing possible, right, with your, with your collarbone? Yeah, it was the absolute worst timing and probably one of the, yeah, the biggest injury I've ever had. Um, it was like four days before I was meant to head overseas for the first like three World Cups. <laughs> I decided I'm going to do this local race, you know, just to go see people before I leave and stuff like that. <laughs> and yeah, seating run. I got through the hardest shoot in the track and then it was just the jump section and whatever jump that was kicking people throughout the day, but it hadn't kicked me yet. And it kicked me in my seating run straight out of the bars, slam into the floor. I was instantly knew there was something wrong with my shoulder because it was so much pain. And yeah, it was bulging out the side of my <laughs> shoulder. So it was great. <laughs> But yeah. Um, was uh, what was the recovery like for that one? Well, I mean, first off, like, what's it like wanting to go to your, the World Cups and you look down, you get bone sticking out of your your shoulder. I just, I, I remember I was on the floor and then this the other girls came up behind me and they're like, "Oh yeah, you've crashed and whatever," and I was just bawling my eyes out, not because I'd broken something, because I was like the Europe trip oh no <laughs> I was just crying I was like oh you're an idiot you're an idiot <laughs> oh, I was so hard on myself and um yeah it's just almost awful feeling I was like oh I've just blown my chance and my parents were like it's okay it's okay we can reschedule you can heal up you'll be fine <laughs> I think in a way it kind of worked in my favor ish <laughs> well it was like just in time for world champs as well right like your healing was pretty much like two weeks or a week before world champs yeah so i 
I broke it and then probably the it was I broke it on Sunday, no, Saturday or Sunday, someday on the weekend. And then that next Friday I had surgery on it and it got pushed back in place. And then we found out I had also done some ligament damage. I was like, yeah. great, okay. <laughs> add that to the list. <laughs> um, but I was back on the bike within two weeks after surgery. So three weeks altogether. Oh, really? Um, it was a bit of a slow process getting back on the bike and getting some strength back into it. And even now it still causes me a little bit of pain, but I can't do much about that either. So, <laughs> But I think it was like eight weeks after I broke it was world titles. So first race back was world titles. And yeah. <laughs> first race back <laughs> after a collarbone, you've done the shoulder and then you go on a fort with him for, for a while. It's like, was there much weighing on, your, weighing on your head or weighing on your brain at the time? Before you went over? Um, well, I think ever since I broke my collarbone, I've lacked a lot of confidence in like my jumping now. Of mm-hmm. uh, I don't, I'm not usually scared of jumps, but now I'm like a bit more timid about them. So I need to still build that confidence back, I guess. <laughs> but going straight into like one of the hardest tracks, like so rough and rocky and long. So the fitness needs to be there. And I did not have the fitness. <laughs> <laughs> And like, you know, nerves and the high states, stakes and stuff like that. <laughs> I didn't, I probably didn't perform my best and I just kind of let all the pressure get to me, I think. Yeah, right. Because yeah. that was your first like international race for mountain biking? Yeah, for mountain biking. It was probably my first ever international race, big race to go straight into as well. <laughs> in like one of the meccas of, of mountain biking, which is Fort William. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, track. I was going to say, describe the, describe the track and, and how it kind of felt and then I guess like how it differs from what you'd usually ride up in the, the SEQ. I think like nothing in SEQ compares to it at all. Like all our tracks are really tight and kind of, you know, dusty and like sharp rocks and gravel and stuff. But Think of like Threadbow, but mm-hmm. a lot longer and probably a bit more rocks, kind of like that. Exactly what I don't want. <laughs> yeah. It was a fun track though. I was going really good on it in practice and I was gaining speed and I was feeling really confident in seating and everything. I got fifth in seating, but mm. qualifying seating kind of thing. They, I don't know if it was qualifying or seating because they kind of cut it from it was top 15 going through and then they made it top 30 going through. So mm. most of us made it through anyway. Um, but yeah, I was feeling really confident seating. And then the next day, all the nerves came to me. I was, I was freaked out, kind of cameras everywhere. You know, the, the Aussie team is all like, oh, yeah, you can you can do it on that. I'm like, oh, my God, the pressure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just rode so bad. I was riding stiff. I just wasn't going as good as I was going the other day. And it was not the best race. <laughs> what? Um... I guess, like, was there much support from, like, the Oz team? Like, what pressure were they kind of putting on you and stuff like that? Like, or was it um, mainly just from them saying, yeah, well done, you've kind of put pressure on yourself now? You know what I mean? Well, they were all really supportive. Like, we had a good coach, like, telling us lines and stuff. He was up on the track and helping us out. Um, all the, um, I don't know what the word is, the other, like, we had a physio there and we had like the head of the team and they were all like really supportive up at the start Mm -hmm. gate with us. Um, I think there was only, there was three of us girls, I believe up to the top for the race run. And they were like with us, you know, getting us warmed up and stuff. Um, They had pretty good support and you just do what you can do and stuff like that. But, you know, just let myself get to get to me, I guess. (laughs) Um, You ended up 12th which is uh, still pretty pretty solid. Yeah, I was kind of hoping to like maybe get into the top 10, but, you know, maybe if I wrote a bit better, I could have got, <laughs> got into the top 10. <laughs> just yeah, well, so bad. I mean, it's easy to say, right? Like, it's easy to race bikes. You just go faster than everyone else. Like, simple, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was it like coming over the final jump and then coming into that finish crowd? Was there quite a big crowd down there or...? Well, yeah, there was probably less of a crowd for the juniors, obviously, okay. but there was still a lot of people there. Mm. You come in and like say your name over the thing, and then you look up at the board, and you just—I I was watching people, and there were com- a lot of people coming down, and just starting to beat me, and I was like, 
<laughs> not fast enough. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a bit gutting, but also it was like, it's just, you know, it's your first race back from an injury. You're overseas for the first time. It's going to keep your head up. It's always like, well, I had like four more races after that just to prove myself. So it's kind of mm. <laughs> keeping it calm in front of the crowd and that. And, just, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, like after that, you went to your your first World Cup, I guess, because it was World Champs. But then you went to was it Ludenville? Was after that? Um, well, before before the next World Cup, we went to a French Cup okay. in Châtel, and then I got second at that one. So it was a bit of a confidence booster for me, and I was mm-hmm. like, okay, I can compete with these guys. I I can I have the speed there. The speed is there. I just need to focus on myself. I loved that track. That track really suited me, and I could go fast on it. Um, very broody, broody kind of dusty track. So it was going pretty all right on it, except for when it rained one practice day. That was so <laughs> <laughs> slippery. But yeah, went from that into Andorra, and Andorra I was. Like the track is very, you know, jumpy, kind of that Aussie kind of style dirt, mm-hmm. and all the dust. Yeah. So I was kind of used to that kind of stuff, knowing how to like lean into the corners, the traction of that slidey kind of dirt. Mm-hmm. So I did pretty well there, I think. But same thing on race day, I kind of was riding a bit stiff and kind of still a bit nervous mm-hmm. and that. But I was definitely better than Worlds. Um, but yeah. Is that the so- one where the, um, where they cancelled something? Oh, no, uh, that was the when they cancelled the men's semis, I think. I think it was, like, raining and, like, too windy up the top or something. So mm-hmm. they got rid of the semis for the elites and um, right. cut out a jump. It was, like, a, yeah. um, a big ramp kind of jump into a big corner. Yeah. And uh, I think Cami Blanche crashed on it. That's knocked right. herself out or something. Yeah. Yeah. I think... A girl in my age um, also knocked herself out or something on the same jump, but a few people were crashing on it. So they wow. cut it out for the elites because it was too windy. Mm. Yeah. What was it like hitting those bigger jumps, like the bigger drops and stuff over there? If you S- Scary. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had no one else to ride with, so I was, I was towing myself into everything and, like, trying to, like, just – Get it in my mind. It's like, you know how to jump. You can do it. Just <laughs> go into them. Just don't look back at you kind of thing. Yeah, it was it was kind of hard with the bigger features because normally I have my brother to tow me into things or I'm riding with other people and they help me get into the bigger jumps and that. But over there, it was all on me. I had to do it all myself. So I had to figure out how to do that. Um, so... <laughs> Yeah, I guess I figured it out in the end. But I'd, I'd say so. That was a solid, I think, a fifth on that one. And yeah. And then, then on to Ludenville where it was, uh, that's the one that was rained out and they cancelled juniors. Yeah, Ludenville was an all right track. It was a bit flat in some sections and some sections were a bit questionable because it kind of went through another track. But mm-hmm. overall, the track was pretty good. Um, yeah, the day of uh racing so we did qualify in the day before and it was all good i think i qualified in seventh yeah seventh yeah you would have um and day of racing it was it rained all night it was kind of still raining in the morning i think and um we did one practice lap and the track was so slippery there's just like cues of us stopping before like big shoots and just sliding down and basically like (laughs) You'd be lucky to make it down. And there was this one big, big shoot and we were all lined up, just taking it one by one going down. Some people would make it down. Some people would, like fall off halfway and just slide. It's kind of funny to watch, to be honest. <laughs> it yeah. did look like fun in some ways, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> track, I th- in my practice runs on that track before the wet weather day, I was I was crashing my brains out. <laughs> yeah, right. Crashing like everywhere. I had a few big stacks in that crash. It was kind of frustrating. Because um, there was like a few little sections that were hard to keep up on the hill because they would just be off camber to like nothingness. Mm-hmm. And I fell into the fence, the same fence, like four laps in a row. 
<laughs> so bad. Your There's one marshal every time watching me just go straight into the fence every single time. I'm like, oh, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> I think I got like, it on. There's nothing like that here, right? Like, there's yeah. nothing like that nothing in like Oz. It. Yeah. It's, it's really easy to crash on those tracks, especially like even if you're going fast or you can just be going slow, you just, just you crash. can crash no matter what. <laughs> I think there was another time, like, I went straight through a corner, through a bush to the other side of the track, and I was like stuck underneath my bike. My <laughs> head was like underneath my bike. And the marshal was just kind of looking at me. He was like, you kid. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I can't move. <laughs> Help. <laughs> what were your kind of thoughts when they, they went off quali results for that race then? It was kind of a bummer. They should have like at least let us, you know, switch tires, take off our mud guards and try it again. Cause everyone mm. was running dry tires and mud guards and like, you know, obviously mud guards stop your wheel from moving if it's that cloggy mm. kind of clay mud. So that, that was me. I think I was, I was on like an Ed Masters video or something trying to get up like a hill. My oh, mud guards right. all clogged up. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> but yeah, they should just let us, you know, try it with the, you know, wet or the tires and stuff and just see how we were going and then maybe like ask for our opinion on it. Because they didn't ask any of the juniors. They just kind of went, nah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> oh, well, they might learn from their mistakes this year. Hopefully. Hopefully they won't cancel another race. Just let us ride. But it was... So a... what... Sorry? It would have been like a good race to like watch. Even if mm. you, it's, it won't be like a you know fast person down the hill. It's like... Whoever can get down the hill, basically, and try and mm. stay on your bike, especially it probably would have been quite fun and fun for spectators to watch, but entertainment wise. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. I was keen. I was keen to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> but then you went to uh, what was it after that? Uh, Leger. Yeah. So you've hit all the good downs, like for your first World Cups, um, <laughs> and then scored a second, like. Were yeah, you expecting that, was... that or? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved that track though. I think that's the only track out of all the tracks that I wasn't crashing my brains out on. Like I, <laughs> I was dialed on it. It was very, very Aussie dirt like and like roots and kind of dust. And I was, I was feeling really confident on that track. I'd like lost all the nerves previously and I just was in the vibe, I guess. <laughs> And um, yeah, I think I qualified two and fifth or something. Yeah, around that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, I was like, okay, I'm in fifth. Just stay in the top five and see how you go tomorrow. So, race day, I'm pumped up. I'm like, you know, a bit nervous, but I'm just breathing. <laughs> Calm down. You know how to ride. <laughs> you know how to ride. Okay. <laughs> and then I just let it go, go as fast as I can. Sprinted my, like, sprinted like crazy in the last section i was like oh, geez i didn't know how i could pedal that hard i was watching like the um watching the playbacks and it's like wow i actually did pedal a lot in that section um yeah i had a few moments in that run though there was like one moment where i nearly went off the track and i was like oh that could have been bad <laughs> and i think i got bucked on one of the um jumps like for like nose yeah <laughs> I think, right i think that was on the live stream and the commentator's like oh bit of a launch there <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh, like second place and also fastest in the speed trap like yeah six and a bit k yeah it was pretty crazy the, the whole feeling of it i was sitting on the um sitting on the hot seat just watching the rest of them come down i'm like oh my god i'm like I was in sitting in first for a sec for a bit and then I got pipped down to second and I was like oh I'm still in second as they kept coming through I'm like oh my gosh um yeah just like <laughs> just... unreal watching everybody there's like a screen behind um the fence of the hot seat and we're just watching us three girls we're all watching the screen like oh god are we gonna be on the podium we're like what's gonna happen and the last game, girl came through and I was still in second. I just see my mom in the car. She's jumping up and down like, oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, I started crying. I was like, no way. <laughs> um, so it's pretty, you know, unreal experience. That's and then, you know, all the crowd's like huge and they're all cheering. And you got, um, who won? Roa Sanchez. She was like over the moon. And I was so happy mm. for her. 
in um, you know, the girl in third, I think that was also her first podium and she was so happy and it was just like an amazing feeling. Like it's crazy. <laughs> Would have been sick. <laughs> yeah. That's wow. so good. I actually got on the podium at a World Cup. This is in my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> and then did you stick around for the elites, obviously, because two Frenchies winning in Leger would have been wild. It was crazy. The crowds, like, you can't see any of the ground. It's just people all over the end hill. It was insane. And then when, like, um, he came through and he won, just stormed the track. They were all like basically <laughs> chasing him down like the finish line. It was crazy. Oh yeah. They're all singing their little anthems, waving flags around. They got banners and oh, it's insane. <laughs> is that like your like exposure to what Euro mountain biking is and like how passionate everyone over there is like would have been mind blowing. Yeah. I had the other races. It wasn't that crazy, but at Leger it was unreal <laughs> so many people <laughs> and you didn't you didn't head over to the us was that just for um just too much or like- uh yeah running out of money and had to go back to school yeah. stuff like that had yeah. to finish school off sadly <laughs> <laughs> that's the insane thing though is like you're over racing world cups and putting in the training and stuff while you're at year 12 like yeah. Was it hard to prioritise which one's which and, and what you kind of had to do? Uh, no, I was, I, was, I was nearly finished school anyway and I basically finished one of my assessments. But by that point, I was basically just like over school. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I just get my final assessments done, hand them in, and then I had to go back and then do two exams. And I was basically just finished and back to training. <laughs> but yeah, the school was, wasn't that bad, to be honest. Like pretty flexible. But my attendance last year was so bad, though. <laughs> That's always so much. I know another guy that was, yeah, doing year 12 through or doing school while racing World Cups. So I think it was below 30% or something silly. Like, yeah. Just never there. Yeah. But you still managed to get your, your like, certificate and everything like that? Yeah. yeah. So I got my, um, what's it called, QC certificate or something like that. Yeah. So past good school. That's good i guess <laughs> i mean you you finished now so you can just focus on training and stuff yeah. like that are you getting trained or have a trainer with the the new team or um not sure <laughs> like i've never had a coach before to be honest okay. like my dad just helps out where he can and even now he's getting a bit slow <laughs> he's gonna watch <laughs> this and be like i'm not slow <laughs> 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 But when I was a kid, obviously, he was a lot faster than me, so he, he helped me me and my brother out a lot, um, basically trained us up, like taught us everything we know, I guess. <laughs> so it's definitely a big part of everything. Very supportive, both my parents. So, <laughs> but, yeah, I mentioned it there. You're on that on a new team this year, like on the Scott bikes. Um, I think your social story about, like guessing which bike it was and the way you drew that frame was amazing. Um, I think I, yeah, I think I was annoying a few people. <laughs> just like, tell us. <laughs> it's fun in that. <laughs> but uh, how did that kind of come about? Did they scout you out at the World Cups last year or did you approach them? Or um, So last year was very much about I was talking to everyone I can, like emailing basically every team possible, um, getting my name around, talking to everyone in person. But actually... We didn't actually talk to the Scott team in person. It was like the only one we did talk to in person. Um, but we're talking to some other teams. And I think um, one of the managers from one of the other teams talked to the Scott manager. And then we started emailing the Scott manager. And he was kind of like, yeah. And then we sorted out a deal. And then yeah, here we are. <laughs> Whose idea was it to, to kind of chase down teams and, and put yourself out there? Uh, mainly dad. Dad's yep. dad pushed me a lot to like go talk to people. I suck at talking to people, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do this like weird when I'm in person. I do like a weird like little giggle thing when I'm talking. Like, <laughs> it's <just> so bad, <laughs> so bad. <laughs> but yeah, I was I getting. Can't used say to I've it. ever noticed, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So what? Yeah. So how hard was it to put yourself out there and talk to these these big teams? Like, uh nerve wracking. Like, I just have to walk up to the tents and then ask where the like because I've been emailing them before I even went overseas and asked. Okay ask where the manager was and if they were around and then have to talk to them (laughs) and then you know it's scary but um after I've been talking to a few of them a few times and I kind of got used to it I guess and less (laughs) nerve-wracking but that's got to be like a huge part as to why you've managed to get this opportunity right is because not many people understand or realize like the approach, like the importance of going to talk to someone in person and network like the way you did. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not what, you know, it's who, you know, Mm. so you just gotta, you know, know as many people as you can (laughs) (laughs) and get people to know you. So that's what I tried to do. (laughs) I mean, your results probably helped as well. Yeah. I'd say that definitely, definitely helped. Um, Yeah. So what um what does next or well, this year on that team kind of entail? Do you know much about it? Like you you're obviously still on that the gambler this year? Yep. So I'm getting the new gambler for this year, the white and green or yellow. I think it's yellow, green and yellow. Those colored <laughs> that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be getting that when I go overseas. Um I'll get all my other gear and stuff like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> You're pretty relaxed about it all. Like, <laughs> yeah, All the excitement's kind of chilled down now. <laughs> I was jumping for joy when it came, the contract came through. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> well, like, what a better brand. So I'm already riding one of their bikes. It's like crazy. <laughs> I was going to say it's like an easy transfer for you. Like yeah. you're, you're already on pretty much everything they're running, right? Yeah, basically. <laughs> Like with the Maxis tires and stuff, and um, I think we're running Kenny Close still. So oh, sick! Yeah. yeah. And who else is on the team with you? Um, so in the academy section of the team, we have got two other riders. We got um, Vicky Clavel. She's like mm-hmm. a second year elite female. Okay. Um, and then you got Hugo Marini. Mm-hmm. Um, he's first year elite, I think. I think so, yeah. He's yeah. pretty quick, eh? Yeah, he's pretty quick. Yeah. That's going to be interesting being on like a team that all speaks French. <laughs> Just learn French. Be like sitting there like, <laughs> yeah, I suck at learning languages. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> immersion is immersion is key. When you have to speak it, that's when you learn it. It's like, it's, yeah. Lots of Duolingo lessons. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, and you've uh, got marine caribou as well, like kind of around as well and that yeah and flow pay is going to be kind of managing it so that's some like pretty big experience right yeah it's going to be pretty cool being around those pros and that uh, <laughs> pretty unreal to be honest like normally watching them on live streams and stuff and then i'm going to be you know right near them <laughs> hopefully get to talk to them and stuff <laughs> i think you probably will away eh? um, yeah. <laughs> and you're going to all the races this year I mean, it seems yeah. like it's uh, mostly Europe and then one US race, if I'm correct. But yeah, yeah. so doing all the season this year. Um, I think we're doing some of the French Cups as well. Okay. Because um, I think that's on the team calendar, we're doing French Cups. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to Europe and riding your bike. It's still what I, that's what they want me to do. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you just answered yes to everything, right? And just, yeah, well, I'll do it. Yeah, so I'll do it. Sick. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Um, what uh, you, you're going to be away for almost like six months or something like that with the throughout the year? Is that yeah. like your biggest stint away from home? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Last year was the longest I've done so far, but now it's yeah six months instead of. I think I was away for like two months last year. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> and you're going to be <laughs> solo this time? Are your parents going over at all? Or? Um, mum will be around, so she'll be coming with me. Bit of a girl's trip. Um, she'll be hanging about just in case I need a parent around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't turn 18 till, I'm, till June, so I'll still be underage in that for a while over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for most of the countries, probably. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. 
Would you just like, mom, do you want to come to Europe with me? And she didn't have to think about it at all and just said yes. <laughs> it's more like, I'm coming with you no matter what. <laughs> but, <Okay. yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even need to ask. She wants the girls trip. <laughs> <laughs> she's packing your ba- her bags before yeah, you even she's, walked in the she's, room. <laughs> she's ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess like you've seen what it's like over in, in Europe and, and how you've got to that team, but um, what's it been like in Oz and trying to build up towards that goal? Is it, is it a bit difficult or has it been easy? Like, I guess it, what are your thoughts around how it's it is, been for you? It is a little difficult because, well, once again, I don't have many people to race over here. Like, uh, this year I've got some good competition um, for nationals and stuff, so that should be interesting. Um, but like last year and that was kind of hard, especially locally, stuff like that. Um, but, you know, just being gym nearly every week, like, well, every week, nearly every day, should I say, <laughs> um, getting, getting on the bike at least, you know, three, four times a week. Um, just doing a lot of training as much as I can, um, trying to get my mindset clear build confidence and like my jumping again um stop chickening out of things so i did i keep doing that a lot a lot of features that i've been to tracks and i'm just like oh do i need to do it and like it's like i should be doing it not need to i should be doing that jump. Anyway. <laughs> um which races are you doing in Oz this year just cannibal nationals are you not coming to adelaide but you go gonna... um no i'm only doing yeah, the cannibal race. I'm not doing full cannibal this year. Mm-hmm. I'm just doing downhill and the whip off. And then I'm, yeah, doing nationals and then going overseas. So Did it. you do whip off last year? <laughs> yeah, I think I've done whip off for well, like how many years I've been doing it? Um, five years or something. It's like, yeah, around five years uh, since, since 2018. Last year's whip off was wild, and some of the girls were just throwing down. It was so sick to watch. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, I need to improve my whips a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do on the jumps, but yeah, whips. Yeah, my strong point. <laughs> I disagree. Um, <laughs> who have been your kind of inspirations, and then stuff as you've kind of grown up riding and, and getting into mountain biking and. Well, I guess my dad mainly, um, and then just watching all like the elite women um, on the live streams, like Tani Seagrave. I love Tani Seagrave; she's so cool. Um, like <laughs> Nina, and then Valley Hall comes in. All those girls, so cool. Like, so just watch and see ride, especially in person. Seeing them ride in person is crazy. Um, being like near them is like, oh my god, fangirling. <laughs> 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 I remember at Worlds. Um, when I first like walked past Honey Seeger, I was like, oh my God, it's her. <laughs> I was freaking out. <laughs> yeah. What's it going to be like uh, racing against uh, Valley at Cannibal then? Or race, like racing the same track as we're there? Scary. <laughs> <laughs> see, see where I am in the elite field, I guess. <laughs> oh, you're, are you elite this year or are you? Next you... year. Okay. Yeah. So I got to start, you know, trying to get times that are somewhat. Mm competitive with the elite women um which is going to be interesting what was a fly on my screen (laughs) yeah Yeah, right so this is your are you kind of nervous to prove yourself in your final year of juniors or are you just basically looking at it as a transition to elite anyway i've got a lot to prove like i got a there's a lot of pressure um Mm -hmm. for this year like I want to hopefully continue contract and then I got to, you know, know that I'm going to do at least half decent next year. So I just got to go as best as I can this year. would be Mm -hmm. great. (laughs) What's the contract? Is it just a one year contract for you then or is it? Um, not really sure. It's like, it's like one of those, um, one plus one contracts so if i do well enough it yep. might continue but uh, not really sure on all the <laughs> little <Yep>. details <laughs> you just said yes it's like where's my pen <laughs> <Sun's> <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um 
Um, might start wrapping things up a little bit here. Uh, for anyone that's kind of looking to do well at racing or get into racing, perhaps any any female or anyone, um, what advice would you have to that crew? Um. Well, first, before you like start racing, make sure you can actually like ride tracks. You know, get your jumping skill down. Um, feel confident on the bike, and then maybe just start doing your local rounds, like seeing how you go in those. Start building confidence. Do that for like a couple of years or something. And then once you feel like pretty confident, maybe go up to like national level, state level kind of thing, and then just go from there. I guess. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, is there anything you'd change or, or regret up until now? Um, well, obviously, I regret breaking my collarbone, but I don't know because I feel like if I didn't break it, then I might not have done the last three World Cups, and I might not have done as well, and you know, all the different things could have changed. So I don't know. I don't really regret anything, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't think I would change anything. And I guess like when you're not motivated to train or like everything's a little bit harder to do, such as race or jump on the bike or something like that, is there any music or anything you do to kind of get amped up and, and get riding or go to the gym or do something you don't need to do when you're low on motivation? But I like the most hyped up music possible and <laughs> just <start> like... <laughs> you're fine you need to be doing training come on <laughs> get it through your head you're an athlete now come on <laughs> um what's the most hot like what are you kind of listening to oh geez i don't know <laughs> don't really have any specific songs that i remember um, what genre like any any genre specifically uh to get hyped up it's normally like you know either there's fast-paced pop songs or like like hardcore rock songs. <laughs> yeah, sick. Just yep. like screaming at you. <laughs> yep, good. Yep. That's so sick. Yeah. Rad. Um, is there anyone you'd like to thank or like any anyone you'd like to mention um before you kind of wrap things up? Oh, I like to thank my parents for it's like, you know, supporting me throughout my whole life, basically. My brother for like you know, being annoying as he is, but still, you know, <laughs> helping me ride and train and stuff. Um, hoping he does well in the future as well. Uh, I like to thank, you know, my sponsors in that. Um, amazing opportunities they've given me. Scott and, you know, KWT still helping me out. Um, yeah, <laughs> thank them all. Yeah, thank you for having me on here. It's <laughs> all right. Easy. Um <laughs> We'll wrap things up with that then. Uh, thanks cool. so much for coming on. Um, hopefully we might even touch base this time next year or something after your first year and see how you went and chat again. Sweet. <laughs> Easy. Well, yeah, again, thanks so much and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Bye. I've got to hang out this.